What's going on True Blazer fans? It's Tori and welcome back to another Monday Mailbag. This is the 26th episode coming to you on a Monday night after this good win over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, I shouldn't say good because we blew a 23 point lead, but at least we got the win. It's nice being 14 games over 500 and hopefully we can get one of these two upcoming games against the Celtics and the Raptors. Two very tough games, but if we can win one of them, we'll be sitting pretty. So I'm going to hop straight into your guys' questions from the past week there are a lot of good ones in this comment section starting off with Chris Jesus saying hey Tori asked this a few weeks ago when there were heaps of questions I forgot to ask again is Portland a bad matchup for any of the other playoff teams for example would there be any teams hoping to go up against someone else even a higher seed like OKC for example instead of versing us that's a great question first off you gotta look at what causes other teams matchup problems I think an opposing team being able to dictate the style of play towards their strength and towards your weaknesses is what makes another team a matchup problem. For example, the Pelicans basically dictated our offense by trapping it. Trapping was their defensive strength, and when we get trapped, we don't seem to have an answer, and we didn't have an answer during that playoff series, so they basically played to their strengths and played to our weaknesses and dictated the style of offense that we played played and we struggled and that's what won them the series problem is i don't think we really dictate the style of play towards the weaknesses of other teams i think we play really well to our strengths which is why we're a good team we have two really good scores and use of nurkic inside i don't think we really make a team get out of their comfort zone defensively because we are a conservative defense we let guys get mid-range shots we don't do a great job of taking away threes you know we're not a great defense like that so I don't think we pose as many matchup problems for other teams as say OKC does but I would probably say the Spurs because they don't have the guards to be able to guard ours they don't have the perimeter defenders and then I think Alfaru Camino actually does a really good job on the Marcus Aldridge and Yusuf Nurkic isn't a bad matchup for him as well I also think we're a pretty bad matchup for Houston because we do have the long perimeter defenders to put on James Harden to give him trouble Evan Turner did a good job on him earlier this season and then Aminu and Harkless would probably guard him they don't really have a big small forward type of player so it's easy to slide one of our guards over onto the small forward I feel like Houston wouldn't really want to play us I feel like we'd be a pretty good matchup for them as well Capella and Farid could trap the pick and roll but they don't really have a Drew Holiday type of perimeter defender to participate in that trap and Capella and Farid doesn't scare me anywhere near as much as Anthony Davis did trapping on that pick and roll. Capella and Farid also aren't as good as trapping as somebody like Jeremy Grant or Andre Roberson who will be playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kevin Cruz says, why do you think we struggle when we are down in the fourth quarter? And honestly, I think it's just because CJ and Dame take it too much upon themselves to try and bring the team back when we're down in the fourth. Instead of trusting the offense that works for us, which relies on ball movement, playing through use of Nurkic, and then pick and roll, they do a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball and it doesn't work. I also think teams do a lot better job shutting down our pick and roll in crunch time because they pressure the ball handler a little bit more, they trap a little bit more, and they make guys who aren't known for their clutch shooting like Aminu and Harkless beat them from the perimeter. BTW13 Gamer NBA fan says, I think we should try and get Ed Davis. Now that would be this offseason. I don't really expect us to re-sign Ennis Cantor because he will make more than we're going to be able to offer him so it might be smart bringing back Ed Davis to replace Ennis Cantor as that third big off the bench but then that would likely mean letting Al Farouk Aminu go because Zach Collins will be in the rotation next year so maybe if Al Farouk Aminu gets paid too much and we let him walk and we slot Zach Collins in at that starting power forward spot Ed Davis might be a decent option to bring back as that third big but who knows if he'd even want to come back after we didn't even offer him last summer he likes it there in brooklyn they're probably going to re-sign him they don't have a young big that they're looking to get minutes so i do expect him to stay in brooklyn but he wouldn't be a bad third big behind zach and yusuf wasted vine says what do you see us finishing in the west at the end of the season by the way i love the content keep it up thank you i honestly think we can get that third seed because okc has such a very hard schedule down the stretch that I think we can catch up to them. Right now, we're only a game and a half back. 
Problem is, we won't have the tiebreaker, they've already won three of the four games against us, but we do face them again on March 7th. I think the winner of that game ends up being the third seed, and I think we can win that game. I think it's about 50-50 between being the third seed and the fourth seed. John Equal says, your high school was purple and gold? Sunset? No, I didn't go to Sunset High School. I grew up in Vancouver. I still live in Vancouver. I went to Columbia River in Hazel Dell. Most of you probably don't know where that is. Insidious Swede said, what are your thoughts on keeping or firing Neil Olshay this offseason now that the trade deadline has passed? I was 100% on the fire Neil bandwagon, but the more I think about it, it really comes down to whoever would get in his place. And there could very well end up being worse GMs. My fear is that a new GM comes in and doesn't value Dame or Nurk in the same way that Neil Olshay does, or is even worse at drafting or free agent signings what do you think and there's definitely some downside but i think ownership just has to be smart has to have a thorough interview process has to have a goal in mind for the type of candidate they want i don't think mcgowan and ownership undervalues dame or nurk and that's probably something they talk about in the interview process with prospective GM candidates. We definitely need to find the right guy, but I do think there's upgrades out there that we should definitely look at. Lover Baseball says, now with Ennis Cantor and Rodney Hood, how far should Blazer fans expect the team to go? Are we a team that can maybe pass the first round, or can we seriously make some noise in the playoffs and maybe make it to the conference finals? And honestly, Cantor and Hood definitely helps our bench. It definitely raises our chances for success, but they don't solve all our problems at all. We still have to find an answer for trapping defenses, and I don't think that's personnel. I think that's coaching. Alfred Camino shot over 43% in the playoffs last season, yet we still succumb to the trap. A lot of Blazer fans think that it's because we don't have a good enough shooter at the power forward spot to be able to make teams pay for the trap, but Alfred Camino shot great. He made over three threes a game during that Pelican series at 43%, so that's definitely not the reason because we still didn't beat the trap, even with a great shooting four. I think a lot of it is game planning, adjustments, the type of offense we run, and I also think it was Dame was burnt out last season when he headed into playoffs. Now, I do think Ennis Cantor and Rodney Hood will take a little bit of the scoring load off of Dame and make it so that he's more refreshed for playoffs. I talked about that in my weekly recap. So in that regard, they'll definitely help us in the postseason. But I do think there's more work that needs to be done in terms of our style of play in the playoffs in order to be successful. Joseph Nichols says, hey man, what do you think we need to do to become a contender? Do you think we would need to potentially gamble by trading either Dame or CJ? By the way, thanks so much for your videos, like highlights and game reviews as I'm a fan of the UK and it's hard to watch any of the Blazer games here as they're always the latest ones when we're playing in Portland. And shout out to you in the UK, we got people in Greece, we got people in Australia, we got people all over the world that are subscribed here to True Blazer Fan, so that's pretty cool. As far as what we need to do to become a contender, like I said, we need to fix our style of play, we need to get better at adjustments, a lot of it is improvement with the coaching staff, also probably need to upgrade our roster, but I still haven't seen our game plan and our style of play fully optimized in the playoffs with the set of players we do have. If we played the right style, made the right adjustments, coached well in the playoffs, I think this team could definitely make the conference finals, but to become a true contender, we definitely need to add another star. Either that or add two really good starters like an Otto Porter Jr. and maybe a Tobias Harris. With those two guys, I definitely think we could contend. A lot of fans would answer this question by simply saying we need to upgrade our roster or we need a more cohesive fit in our backcourt. We need to split up Damon CJ. I don't think you have to split up Damon CJ. I think you do need to make a roster upgrade at one of the forward spots in order to make this team good enough but we also need better coaching than we've seen in playoffs in years past so anyway that's all your questions from the past week thank you for asking them make sure to leave your questions down in the comment section below and i will try and answer them next week so with all that i hope you guys have a good week ahead and i'm out of here this has been tori peace out go blazers